The Toronto Blue Jays have won their second series in a row, and I guess all it took for them to get going was to actually play some central teams and get out of the AL East. That's all it took. So they won 3-1 today against the Brewers, and we'll break that down and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Vrionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, things are back to normal somewhat in Blue Jays land. I mean, they're, they're starting to hit the ball a little bit more as of late. They're pitching a lot better. Their defense has looked better in the last couple of series. This is the Blue Jays that we can get used to watching on a regular basis. Much better than those other couple weeks that they were struggling. But I think things are so, uh, starting to get back to normal here. And uh, it's been a nice change of pace. Yeah, it's nice to you know get some wins, win some series after that super rough week. But before we do get in the video, we want to thank you guys for letting us hit 7,000 subscribers. We didn't have a video yesterday, so we didn't get a thank you. Peter, you did make the community post, which was good. But I want to thank you again for all the support. Now we're on the road to 8,000. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. And hopefully the Blue Jays, uh, we bring the Blue Jays some, some good luck. But let's just get into it. And like you said, the Blue Jays win the series. And... Like we discussed, you know, a week ago in the midst of this rough patch before the, the last series there, we just need to win one series at a time. If we continue to win just each series, we'll slowly crawl our way back into the wildcard pitcher and hopefully more than that. But what a game today. Kevin Gosman, which we'll discuss later, was is phenomenal. Boba Shett, who we'll also discuss later, was great. But Peter, what were your thoughts on uh, on the hitting side of today's game and just, you know, the defense and everything in general? I mean, this one had all the makings of an offensive explosion early on for the Blue Jays. They got three runs early on in that first inning. Bo Bichette with the solo home run. Then Matt Chapman, I know he hit one not long ago, but it feels like he's been in such a slump lately. And he got one. He hit one, uh, an absolute missile to right field. And it just felt like they were going to put up 15 runs and exercise all of their demons. That didn't happen, but it didn't matter because they pitched an absolute... Well, Kevin Gosman pitched an absolute gem. Then the bullpen came in and did what they had to do. But I've just been very impressed with them over these past couple of series. There was a lot of talk. Can they win games? Will they ever win a game again? That's what it felt like being a Blue Jay fan in these past couple of weeks. And man, they, they seem to have really turned the corner here a little bit. Still leaving a little bit to de to be desired with the hitting and scoring position and uh, with the runners in scoring position. Sorry, and you know some some guys that we do want to see turn it around, but st little steps, baby steps, and as long as we see some improvement game by game, it's all you can ask for at this point. Yeah, let's go over the box score in case you missed it. George Springer went two for four. He's quietly starting to put together a really solid season, especially if you take away his first you know bit of the year. Boba Shed, he had his home run, which I'll show you guys. Uh, we'll discuss later. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. luckily got a hit in his fourth at bat, so he didn't go hitless, but he still is one of those guys that you mentioned, Peter, about needs to get it going a bit more. Varsho is playing solid, and of course, Matt Chapman with the bomb. And someone who's honestly playing decent as well lately is Kevin Biggio. Obviously, he went over two, but he did have a couple walks. He's had to fill in, especially now with Brandon Belt. Uh, you know, he's sick. He's done a decent job. I think he's hitting above 300 over his last like 40 plus plate appearances. So I don't know if you want to quickly touch on Biggio before we, uh, before we move on, but. It's pretty, pretty solid of him. He's gotten a lot of heat from us and from a lot of Jays fans in general. And this is what we expected out of him co coming into this year. Someone that could step in and, and play anywhere on the field in a pinch. And he made a nice play at first base today. Helped uh, Kevin Gosman turn that double play over there. And I've been very impressed with him over the past couple of games. Yeah, and if he continues to do that, he's going to you know, get some more playing time, which John Snyder has been playing. Of course, there's a bit of a necessity today with Brandon Belt hurt, but you know, anyone who's really rocking, even Tyler Heineman got a little you know, blue kind of double there in the uh, earlier in the yeah, game. Which, yeah. You know, people, if they take their opportunities, they got to definitely take advantage of them. But one other thing I want to touch on before I move on to the pitching was uh, is Kevin Kiermeyer. Now, he's hitting phenomenally on the season. He had a rough game today, but Peter, his defense was absolutely phenomenal today. I don't know if you wanted to touch on that diving play in, in center field, but he has been an absolute stud for the Jays. Yeah. Before I do that, I want to give some huge credit to Tyler Heineman yep. for the job. Down that he a runner did. Too. Yeah. Yeah. He was unbelievable behind the plate. I mean, his, his arm back there was phenomenal. He showed great accuracy pretty decent arm strength as well and he really commanded the zone well with kevin gosman now whatever he does at the plate is a bonus and i thought he even got robbed one time he yep. could have been two for two today uh, he had that double down the line and then he had that missile um, that missile of a line drive down right field and you know you, you just got to put some good swings on the ball if you're the nine hitter you got to have some good at bats and that's what he did today 
And Kevin Kiermaier, man. What more can we say about this guy? Look, look at this catch, man. One of the best plays I've ever seen, big, yeah. 15% catch probability on that. That's what I saw. Chris Black tweeted that out, and just unbelievable. Um, it covers so much oh, ground out there. Yeah, show one more time. He had a chance to make an unbelievable play yet again on Rowdy Telez in the ninth inning, but he couldn't come up with the catch, unfortunately. And that uh, that obviously led to that run that broke the shutout for the Blue Jays. But he's just been phenomenal, Kevin Kiermaier. And it doesn't matter. He could go over for the rest of the season, and he's still such a valuable piece on this team. Yeah, it's a, kind of one by commission today. Everyone chipped in a little bit. Obviously, Chapman and Bo had the big bombs. But overall, phenomenal game. And someone who definitely also had a phenomenal game was Kevin Gosman Masterclass. And it's felt like a while since I could uh, – I kind of used the word Masterclass because it really takes a special performance for, for me to use that word. And – he didn't go seven innings today like he usually kind of sometimes does, but wow, what a game for him. When you're striking out that many batters and you have your splitter going, your pitch count's going to get run up a little bit. Peter, he was absolutely filthy, touching 99.3 miles per hour. He was 0.2 miles per hour away from the radar gun showing 100, six and two-thirds, five hits, two walks, 11 Ks. And what do you think about him? He was absolutely dominant today, and he is our ace, and he is the guy I trust by far the most on this pitching staff. He's ridiculous. He is ridiculous, Nick. And... What more can you say about Kevin Gosman? He gives you a chance every time he's out there on that mound, and he's just so fun to watch. 11 strikeouts and six and two-thirds. You know, his pitch count was, what, 99 to end yep. that sixth inning, I Run believe? Back out. So, I, yeah, I thought, okay, this is it. This His day is done. I'm, I'm over here working in the studio, and I'm talking to my, my guys during a commercial break, and I'm like, okay, he's done. He's out of here. Then he comes back out like uh, like The Undertaker for the seventh inning, and he's ready to go, and he gets that double play. Double play he went yeah. up to 116 pitches. Just unbelievable, man. Like, what what a performance. What a warrior. He's just so talented. And I'm going to stick by it, man. Best pitcher that the Jays have had since uh, prime Roy Halladay. I, yeah. I don't care. That you've I'm seen. Say that you've seen. We'll, we'll, we'll clarify that. I'm sure there's a couple well, of right. Best pitcher since Roy Halladay. Okay. I think uh, that's pretty. We can we can agree on that, right? I think so yeah, I think we're I think we're there. I might be missing a couple of the older guys that I don't remember. The comments will definitely let us know. So we'll, we'll see if we uh, if we. I think I would agree though. And he's been absolutely phenomenal. Well, we saw Roy Halladay. That's yep. why. That's why. I say and it. Kevin yeah. Gosman as well. Just what a steal of a contract by Ross Atkins. Got to give him credit there. And Eric Swanson. What an outing out of him. And Romano, of course, gave up the run. But it's nice to see both of those guys get some work. They haven't been working as much lately with the Blue Jays losing so much. But before we wrap up, we will quickly touch on just Bo Bichette, and I feel like we haven't really had a dedicated conversation about him, so we'll just touch on him for a minute. I'll show you the home run that he hit, and he is the Blue Jays' best player. I think at this point so far throughout the season, it's not really a debate anymore, especially because he's picked up his defense to pretty close to league average, and we've both been, especially you, Peter, you've been critical of his defense, and I have been as well, but he's making the routine plays. He still has some room for, for growth, of course, especially on the more difficult plays, but him just making these routine plays and then going out and hitting, you know, eight, 900 OPS is, is all you could ask for him, especially when he's leading off games with bombs. He's making me eat my words, and I couldn't be happier to see that happen because he is playing, uh, he's just playing elite baseball right now. He's been one of the best hitters on the planet, and if it weren't for Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani, we'd be talking about Bo Bichette as a potential MVP candidate, and he might even be there when, when it's all said and done. He might be probably that third guy when yep. when the season is over amongst those other two names but he's just been so good his defense has really elevated to the point where you feel somewhat confident when the ball is hitting his direction and if you're hitting in the 330s with multiple home runs and multiple extra base hits i think we could live with maybe a couple of miscues defensively if they don't happen too often and i've just been so impressed with him he has been the face of this team this season and I don't know where they would be without him. Yeah, he figured out his defense to a degree, and that's all he needed to do to become one of the best players in baseball, and uh, he did just that. So that's good to see. And quickly, a look ahead for tomorrow as we wrap up here. We play the Mets. Chris Bassett will take the hill, looking for a bit of a bounce-back start after his rough start last, uh, last game. And any quick thoughts on this before we wrap up? Hopefully Jays can win another series against the, uh, the Mets. Not going to be easy. They're playing in New York uh, against a very good Mets team, and Chris Bassett against his former uh, his former team as well. So that should be interesting to watch. Yeah, it's going to be fun, and hopefully they can uh, Chris Bassett can do what he's been doing for the majority of the year, go six or seven innings strong. But that'll wrap up the video. Again, thank you guys for seven thousand subscribers. We'll be there for a video tomorrow. See you then.